The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, guys, let me here modify the uh, information. <clears throat> and let me write here, let's say, for example, started. And uh, now let's uh, begin and uh, start the work one by one. So first of all, what we are going to do here is we'll talk about the agenda of this session. What is the target of this session? So the target of this session is to actually uh, learn something out of the syllabus, get some kind of additional knowledge out of the syllabus thing. And uh, today we are going to see one uh, interesting concept. And uh, what out of the things we are going to see here, let me tell you. Uh, please note that uh, if you remember that in the training program, in the regular training program, I told you that uh, in Salesforce, we have the flexibility, specifically in Visual Force page, we have the flexibility of uh, using HTML also, that we also saw practically. We can use HTML tags, we can use jQuery, we can use Ajax, we can use JavaScript, we can use AngularJS, we can use ReactJS, we can use Handlebars, we can use um, ExtJS, many things we can use, okay? So, this is not important for your uh, uh, career to know all these things, it's not necessary also. But in some cases, in some kind of interviews, if you have some kind of knowledge or awareness about JavaScript, uh, along with the Visual Force pages, then that can help you. It's not compulsory, as I said, it's not compulsory, but good to have that knowledge. And uh, that's why we are taking the benefit of this out of the syllabus sessions to teach you something more out of our syllabus to ensure that you will be more and more stronger before you face uh, your first interview or your upcoming interviews. So let me start and tell you the today's agenda is going to be a combination of Visual Force page and a combination of JavaScript coding inside that Visual Force page. Okay, so that is what actually we are going to see here. So for this purpose, what I will do is uh, I will actually, uh, first of all, go to the Salesforce environment and I am going to explain you step by step everything, pay attention. So I'm into the Salesforce environment. Let me go to Lightning experience. Let me go to Lightning experience. And uh, of course, we are going to use here Visual Force page. You guys, will be getting the chance to learn lightning uh, JavaScript also in the lightning course that you have you are learning so in that also JavaScript is there here we are learning JavaScript with visual course page in that lightning course you are learning JavaScript with lightning here JavaScript with visual course pages so now what I'm going to do here is I'm in the sales course I'm going to lightning now I'm going to for developer console because you know that we can create the visual force page from developer console so i'm going to proceed for this option and uh, just to wait a minute i'm going to uh, just uh, here uh, close all the files and uh, now after this i will do one thing so i'll click on file i'll click on new and visual force page okay Here I'm going to write the name. Let's say Visual Force page with with JavaScript. Something like this. I will give the name. Okay. Click on. Okay. Fine. So this is my Visual Force page. Now what I will do here is uh, to give you the clear clear picture how things works in Visual Force page and how it works in Salesforce. How you can put this combination. Just pay attention. We'll talk about that one by one. So uh, please note, assume that this uh, Visual Force uh, page, whatever we are uh, creating, whatever you are using, so that start with Apex page, and uh, whatever we write inside this Visual Force page, 
FX page or the related information forms everything now will go here so we can actually inside this FX page we can write uh, FX form everything same the way we saw in the past okay now here we can actually uh, show some button or you show some table you show some image your wish whatever you want to do this is called as visual course code but now inside this code we can also merge a javascript code and how we can do this because if i'm going to mix two technologies code in one file then that platform will get confused yes you're right it's going to it's going to get confused so for that do one thing you actually in the apex page only in the apex page only whatever apex page we are writing or whatever apex code we are having please note in that same page you just tell salesforce that i need an area for javascript coding i need an area salesforce says okay fine take the area so where i want let's say i want right here okay so let's say we want right javascript code here so salesforce is okay so to ensure you're not going to confuse me salesforce is ensure that you're writing your entire javascript code in the tag called as script we said okay fine so scr R I P T script and here closing S E R I P T that's it. here you are going to write entire the JS JS code goes here. Okay, so the JavaScript code will be going here. Okay, so now after this, whatever you will write inside this code. Salesforce will identify it's not visual force page, it's JavaScript code, and this will work fine. Okay, so now what we will do here is we'll do one thing. Let's say uh, we will actually take one, uh, let's say, field, and uh, what we will do, we will take, let's say, some apex input field. I will just try to give us a scenario by which you can understand how two things. Can be possible how two things can uh, work so what i will do here is uh, i will use one button i will create a button here okay so i'm going to add a button and as you know that here visual force page visual force code goes here so there is no confusion for salesforce salesforce will understand what is java code what is visual force page code and uh, that's it. okay and uh, here the js code ends here or let me write here starts here okay and here first page you're writing here okay fine so now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a but a uh, field okay a field let's say um let's say apex and uh, then let's say you can go for input field or uh, input for FX input just one minute this is let me just take this tray at the bottom it's not showing me all the options properly so you can see input input field input text whatever let's say input text uh, text anything okay and you can see the properties what property you want you want uh, any id let's say you want to give id so let's say for example here uh, first name uh, input field. Let's say this is the ID we are given. You can give any ID, by the way. It can be any ID. And uh, also, you can give uh, some kind of label here. Uh, let's say, for example, post, name, something like that. Okay. And uh, then, apart from that, you can also give some other properties, like for example, label or uh, language or max length, etc. etc. All these things you can write here. So, actually, this way we are trying to just uh, achieve any kind of uh, input field okay we are just trying to go for an input field this kind of things by the way we have seen already so you don't have any kind of uh, doubts i am pretty much sure on that because we have seen all these things already okay so we have created such kind of buttons in the past input text etc and uh, now uh, now after this what we will do. so as you created this uh, input text and uh, this kind of informations added here 
you can also add any kind of value etc you want to add okay similarly you can also do one thing similarly you can also instead of this prefer using any kind of uh, input uh, put field also now that input field is going to be with the connection of uh, any kind of object that also you know okay so that also that's also possible so if you want to just go for any kind of such connection go for input field also you can write so let me just do that you can go for input field also and fix input field so now this will be having combination to some object that also you know okay which object you can mention here for example you want to mention standard controller and uh, you want to actually mention contact so this way your page is now connection with the uh, is having the dependency on contact object and like this you can also mention okay now in terms of value for the input uh, field we can also give attribute called as value and we can do one thing whatever contact name if you want to connect with any contact name you can connect here okay i am just giving here the information that how you can use different different things in the visual force page code here i'm writing this information now suppose here you want to give any id so let's say we can give here any kind of id also id equal to let's say id one two three this way also you can give any kind of id okay and now the interesting thing is look at this on change on click on focus key down etc so now this is very important if now whenever any value is changed or for example in this field i'm typing something and in this field i'm typing something and uh, the value of this whatever information i'm typing in this field the value got changed then i want to do something or i click on this field then i want to do something then these are the ready-made functions given to you to call the javascript code for example click on this on change now what will happen whenever any value in this input field will be changed then automatically a function which we are writing here that will be called so what we generally do is this let me tell you assume that i'm going to have a function and my function name is let's say here right function i'm writing this function in the javascript okay this is my javascript function okay so javascript function to be called from visual force page so i'm writing this lengthy name because it should be clear to you what is the purpose behind this function and that's it this way i can write here javascript function so here then js code goes here whatever you want to write okay so actually your main logic is going to be here you can write anything your main logic and that's it this way you can actually perform the things now what we'll do now now as soon as the value is going to be changed for that input field we will call uh, this function okay we'll call this function so this is how actually we make the communication between visual force page and java from javascript uh, we on change on click on blur such kind of events are there by default present in visual force page we just use that and we perform the need okay we just perform the need so what we will do now here we will call a function here what we will call a function and uh, let me just uh, show you how actually you can just call the function just do one thing here just copy this name just copy this name and put it here okay put it here and uh, at the end you can use this bracket and uh, also semicolon so it means now we are going to call this javascript function okay and i'll just also i'll do one thing i'll just uh, take this in the next line i'll just uh, take this in the next line so that you can understand you can see everything properly and then you can understand how actually it is going to work and uh, by the way please note here that uh, uh, 
uh, it is always good it is always good to ensure that uh, whenever whenever and by the way there is a spelling mistake okay there is a spelling mistake on change on change two times copy pasted okay so let me just correct the spelling only just let me write on change okay so what we are telling we are selling now that whenever the input field value is changed then i want to call a javascript code and this way a specific javascript will be called okay and also this id is coming extra please remove this id that's also coming extra some typing mistakes some some typing mistakes are there so just do the needful and uh, after that now you are having a calling mechanism ready please note now the calling mechanism is ready means what will happen now this input field in my visual force page whenever any value in that input field will be changed then on change event will automatically get called we don't need to do anything for this this is already present in visual force page if any change happens to that field data this event which will be automatically called now what this event will do this event will call this javascript function and this way the entry will happen from visual force page to javascript okay so this is the entry point after that what you want to do you can write in the visual javascript page so for example let's say here i want to write some kind of message some kind of simple message let's say if i want to show any message on javascript then there is a function called as alert this is the function we use for showing some message so i will do one thing i will write here that this message this message is coming coming from javascript code anything you can write anything okay so look at this now so this way now what i will do this way my javascript and my visual force page combination is working okay now i'll do one thing i will make this code pretty much shorter because you can understand the complete picture and uh, let me just uh, just close here and uh, then the visual force page starts here and uh, this is in this line okay all fine okay so see how in single page i'm using the javascript code also and in the single page i'm using visual force page code also so now what will happen because of this now because of this first of all we will be getting one field one input field we will be getting on our page if you are typing something if you are writing something in that input field then in this case it will actually call the particular uh, javascript code and uh, because of that the code will start working okay so this is how actually the scenario now let's do one thing here now what we will do first of all let me now uh, show you one important information in this javascript code uh, we can actually write the function exactly same way we have learned in the apex programming okay almost everything is same no major change the same pattern you are going to also follow here and uh, slight changes can be there in terms of uh, syntax but that's okay like every technology has different syntax apart from that there is no major difference apart from that there is no major change so please note this important thing okay so now let's do one thing now let's move ahead and as you understood this uh, background now what we will do is we will actually uh, try to implement some functionality and for that what we will do uh, we will actually um, like add two scenarios here what scenarios let me tell you scenario number one uh, we will actually add this whatever information we are uh, getting from this case we will just take this all information and uh, to that function which we have in the top we are going to just contact or connect to that function from the visual force page okay so let me now show you how actually we are going to do this we are going to run this visual force page we will be getting one uh, input field uh, let's say for example contact name etc and uh, based on that we are going to call that particular function okay so this kind of uh, 
activity we can do now whatever scenario i have done for contact object same thing you can also perform by the way for uh, the account object also so this is totally fine whatever object you are having you can use for that and it will start working okay. so everything is just same pattern so now i will show you a scenario if i want to let's say for example go for any other object or something like that that uh, any center object then without making any kind of uh, pattern any kind of big change you can actually show this information okay so let me just show you that also so that you will be actually getting the confidence that how easily we can make uh, all these uh, changes how easily we can make all these changes and uh, perform the activity so just give you one second and let me show you another piece of code so for example let's say look at this another piece of code for you okay let's say this time i am working on account object so let's say for example here in account object i am creating the script area for javascript coding then the apex form i am writing here for visual force page coding and i am given the label let's say text field we have seen this kind of things already input field value equal to i am just connecting this is called as binding that you know already data binding this is just a random id we are giving and on change of this field what will happen this function will be called on change this function will be called so this way you can just use the same knowledge and information you are getting here and you can modify and use it for any function that you want to use in your journey so now in the javascript code we can write some kind of alert you can write any kind of alert function let's say i'm going to write here hi so as soon as this function will be called then please note this message hi should be coming into the picture so that is what actually our target is if this function hi got called then please note that we need to understand that the javascript code is getting called okay something like this so now what we will do here is this look at this i'm going to run this code okay i'm going to run this code and see what's going to happen and by the way please note here on change on change apart from that you are having various options okay on change on on change on blur on click on focus on key up on key down means whatever events are there at that time you can't want to call this javascript button for example i press the key in that field at that time i want to call javascript no problem let's say i take the key up of my mouse uh, sorry of my uh, keyboard then you want to call this javascript function you can see so many options are there on change on click on uh, button click on uh, uh, let's say on double click on focus everything is there okay so this kind of things let's say on double click when you go for on double click then when you are going to click on this field double two times okay then it's going to call that javascript function so such many functions are there by default and this is how actually this programming becomes pretty much easy when you go with the combination of javascript okay so just you have to perform this activity and uh, do the needful okay for example let me now show you one important thing look at this i am going to now run this code i am going to show you the output here what i said i said whenever i am going to double click on my field at that time when i am going to double click then you call this function javascript function and in that function mention hi okay now see here run this page okay run this preview run this page and uh, this is the page we got as an output okay now this is my text field okay just do one thing just you type something here see i'm typing something anything happening nothing happening because i am waiting for double click this system is going to wait for double click as soon as double click will happen this system will do something i'm waiting for the double click okay okay fine i'm going to now remove this anything happened no i'm going to take the focus from that i'm going to just press on the tab to go for other option anything happening no nothing happening. Right. now i will do one thing i will just take the mouse cursor here and i will double click look at this double click and a java message came javascript message hi okay so this way you are based on the visual force page 
you have a button you have field if customer is taking any action on that visual force fetch button or field or single click or double click on typing press mouse key down mouse key up key, keyboards button down keyboard button up at that time if you want to perform something then javascript is very very useful in the real time project and this is how actually we guys do the use of javascript in our projects if something is happening on the button something is happening on the field then we call the relevant javascript code and we perform the activity there okay so this is how we can use this javascript button javascript code one more important thing i would like to tell you that uh, this kind of things we can do in the apex class also for example if you remember our previous sessions when we learned controller so i can simply write here one more apex class name let's say by using extension and i can do my entire logic in that apex class also then why we should prefer javascript so listen carefully whatever code is happening this entire code whatever is happening it's happening on my browser at browser level it's happening which is called as client level it's happening on my local system are we connecting to any server no everything is happening on my laptop means on my browser but when we actually write an apex class then from here the connection goes to the server of salesforce which can be 100 kilometers which can be 1000 kilometers from a house and it will go to the server of salesforce their apex class will work then i will come with the results all this kind of things happens if you want to make everything on your browser level on the client level without going to server because going to server and coming back is definitely in terms of timing and in terms of internal resources it's going to take lots of things so in real time project whenever we want to check here right at the moment on the browser level we don't want to go to apex class level then we write our logic here so a question may come in your mind so what kind of logic we write here in javascript please note in the real time project if any user is entering any data he entered any data so data is correct or not instead of let's say the format is correct or not or we want to just do one thing we want to check with some kind of additional formats we can check here but suppose you want to work on let's say a uh, database you want to work on dml you want to work on soql you want to work on trigger you want to work on sosl then no solution you have to go to apex you have to go to apex this is the only solution go to apex we can do some other things also but ultimately when javascript level or visual force page level but 99% we have to go to apex and that's why in this case you can go to apex but any kind of thing is there which you can manage at this level only especially the validation of the data whatever user is entering at that time we can use javascript and uh, in this case what kind of things we can do or what kind of uh, activity can we can do i will tell you one small information what we will do now see whatever we are typing here whatever we are typing or let's say for example uh, i'm having some kind of data okay inside this i'm having some kind of data so i want to pass this data in that in this field in this field for example look at this i'm having some data uh, a b c d okay i'm having some data now this data is in the visual force page this data is in the visual force page i want to pass this to the javascript level okay so i can do that also right now we are only calling the function we are not passing the data you can pass data also you can pass data also how we can pass the data so i'll just tell you <clears throat> so first of all here in this function okay here pass the id information in this bracket okay which id this input field is there right it is this input field it has some id right so this id information you pass from this function that's it so this id will go here and here the data can be also passed so let me tell you that activity also how actually it can pass so for this the mechanism that we follow there are multiple ways by the way to write javascript and do the coding in javascript similarly we saw in the salesforce there are multiple ways to do salesforce programming but here if you want to pass some kind of data then please note that actually the syntax that you need to follow here is something like this you just need to pass in the bracket please note in the bracket 
let me just show you in this bracket you just pass this just pass this information you put in the bracket so what will happen now please note on this page we have this id okay we have this id this id's information will be sent to javascript so this way we can send the information about any entity that is input field to the javascript okay so this is the syntax we need to follow just cut this and paste in the bracket and that's it so now the information about id1 will be sent to javascript so this way we can have communication between visual force page to javascript and also we can pass the data we can also pass the data by the way okay now what to do now here in the javascript function you remember in the apex programming we understood the way we can pass the function data we can receive also we can receive also so we have to receive also right so we can do one thing here we can give any kind of uh, variable name by the way in the javascript you don't need to declare any variables okay like the way we have integer age string full name we don't need to declare this kind of things in javascript we can just directly use any variable name so here for example uh, where uh, for storing id okay so what will happen now here as soon as double press happen the id of this entity i will transfer to javascript and javascript will receive that in the variable where for storing id after that what i can do now i can do lots of things because i have id remember the dml topic remember the dml topic where we discuss in the dml topic i told you if you get the id of the record then you can do many things right you can make the use of this record in multiple ways similarly here also when you get any id of any element in the javascript code you can do lots of things with that element whether it's a button whether it's an input field whether it's input text it can be anything by the way okay now i can do many things so what i will do now i got the id okay i got the id so now i have a function in javascript and here please note please note now here function in js to get the information present information of any item present in visual for page what is the function what is the function so that function is here document dot now see document is the uh, class and we are going to actually call the function get element by id and please note because this get element by id g is small e is capital so always be careful in the javascript for cases in apex case not important visual force page case not important in html case not important but in javascript case is very important okay remember this point this is the issue with javascript and now here we are passing this id get element by id and this way here now i can get the information about this item which item which is referred here this variable what is referred this input field. so you can see how step by step we are passing all the information to the javascript code now i'll do one thing here i will remove this hull alert i don't want to use that okay so what happened now let me tell you first of all we have created one input field as soon as a double click will happen in that input field then this function will be called change set change case and in that case we are passing the id of this input field and that id now i can use i can do many things here in the javascript i'm doing something now here what i will do i will now here in this case mention let's say i will just store the information and uh, please note here <coughs> i can now declare and by the way here you can declare you can write any kind of things in the in this case you can write here so please note you can see here i have declared a variable without where that's possible in uh, javascript okay uh, for example i did not mention any data type no integer no string nothing i did not mention something like this integer something like this it's not required in javascript it's not required here okay you can take it like this one but if you want to now here write, write any variable here then also let me tell you an interesting thing here also you don't need to write integer or uh, for example string anything like that 
in JavaScript, you can simply write var, and for example, any variable you can declare that's all. So please note two special things you understood in the function parameter. You don't need to declare any variable type, no requirement. Okay, it's not required. And here, instead of writing integer string or something like that, we simply wrote var. This is also one more thing possible in JavaScript. So now a question may come in your mind. So Shekhar, suppose this variable, any variable, is of string, is of double, is of boolean, is of uh, integer. So will not JavaScript will JavaScript not get confused? No. In the JavaScript, the special thing is for every variable, you can just write data type equal to var, and that's okay. It means here, cell so JavaScript will automatically internally manage everything, integer, string, whatever is the data. JavaScript will automatically understand. So this is a very big difference that we have seen in FX language and JavaScript language. Here, just write where and that's it. It will automatically adjust. So now what's happening? So now actually, I got the information about this field and that information is present in any variable. Please note here. Now, I can also do one thing, by the way. Here, I can also do one thing. So please note, uh, let's say, uh, let's say for example, uh, where uh, variable, okay, so this is the best practice we're following, where that we saw in the FX programming also, always use the variable name starting with where uh, to uh, store element reference, okay that we got passing id okay and by the way you know we can write such kind of lengthy variable name also and why i'm writing here because you are new people to javascript and that's why to let you know what's happening here i have mentioned so first of all please note this variable only stores id only id but this variable now gets the complete reference of that entity input field okay that's why I'm writing here in a detailed way. We'll understand what's happening. Okay, so you got the complete reference. And now, suppose whatever reference I got, now I have full control of that field. I have reference of that input field. Now, suppose if I want to actually, uh, let's say for example, get the value or get the information, whatever came in that field, if I want to see that information, then I can do like this here. So now, as I said, here, this is nothing but the id and this is nothing but the complete reference for the field now if i want to get the i value of that i can get like this also here dot value now this will give me the value present in that input field okay let me just show this in the print in the alert format and see here what's going to happen alert and uh, giving some column so this way what will happen now whatever value in this input field present that value i can get here so this way we can step by step step by step take the control on all the things in the visual force page get their id if you get the id then get the reference of that entire element if you get the reference of the entire element then from that element you can fetch the values you can fetch any other properties this way it works very well in javascript so now what i'm going to do i'm going to actually <coughs> Here, save this Visual Force page. I'm going to save this Visual Force page and uh, I'm going to run this Visual Force page. So, after this, what I'm going to do now, see what's going to happen. Okay, pay attention. What's going to happen? Interesting thing you are learning so many things in this one example. You are learning so many things about JavaScript. Okay, so do watch this video one more time to get the information and uh, please note down here. See. What is the complete flow? The complete flow is first of all, this Visual Force page will load, and we will get now one normal text field that is the input field. Okay, so let's say, for example, uh, please enter the name, something like this. Okay, okay, this will first of all load. So let me now show you that first of all, click on preview. Let me show you that much part first of all. Visual Force page. And look at this. This is my Visual Force page. Please enter the name. Okay, coming now. 
as soon as I'm going to type something here, it's okay. Whatever I can type, I can just type here anything, and nothing is going to happen. There is no connection to JavaScript yet. Nothing is getting connected to JavaScript yet. Wait. But as soon as I am going to actually, uh, where is that code? As soon as I am going to double click on that field, then the control will go to JavaScript function called as change case. Okay. Or let's say, for example, I am going to write here. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, JS function. Okay. JS function. And my function name is this. And I am calling this function. Okay. So what will happen as soon as I'm going to double click on this, the function called as JS function in JavaScript will be called. Not only we are calling, but we are even passing the ID of this item. We are passing even ID of this item. So the ID will go here. We are passing the ID also. Okay, fine. Now, after that, once you got the ID, I will also show you here. I will do one thing. First of all, I will just comment all this line. Okay, and I will only first of all show you what actually ID we got, okay? What ID we got? Alert. And let's print this where for storing ID. What ID we got? Let's see that. Save. So let us see what we got there. And preview. And uh, this will open the Visual Force page. Okay? Now just do one thing. Here, just give double click. Just double click. And look at this. Some ID. Can you see? Can you see? Look at this. Some ID information is getting transferred from Visual Force page to JavaScript. Okay, what we have done? We have just written this. We have said that as soon as double click will happen, then please pass the ID of this item. Okay, and by the way, please note there are always two IDs in the JavaScript. One is the ID which we use here, and second is the internal ID which is actually available for internal processing. The way you saw right now it's a kind of weird name id 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 something like this you can see here so let me just show you here this is internal id you can see j id 01 all these things this is the internal id okay so there are always two ids in the javascript uh, we can and uh, please note here uh, so in this code in the, in the page where we use javascript so one is the this id you can this id is one something which is useful for visual force page level and in the javascript one internal ID is also possible by this way. Okay, you prefer this ID whenever you are actually going through JavaScript Visual Force page combination. Listen very carefully. Whenever you are using any page with JavaScript and Visual Force page combination, use this ID. In your code, you are having no connection to JavaScript. It's purely Visual Force page code. Then you prefer this ID. Okay, so this way, depending on the requirement, you can do that. And this way, I got the ID here. Okay, ID is received. Now, what we will do? now we will just uncomment this so what we will do now whatever id we received we are saying we are saying document dot get element by id means we are saying now give me the reference of that entire element input field in my javascript and put that entire reference in this variable so this is what actually we are trying to achieve by this line entire references coming there and then finally i'm going to put one alert message to see what new value is coming what is the value coming along with the reference because now this time you are having the direct reference for that field so that reference that value it will give me the value whatever is present in that field this way you can exchange the data between javascript and visual force page let me click on save let me click on save and preview and preview and see what's going to happen Okay, now I'm going to write some name. Let's say, for example, Shaker. Nothing is happening. It's still in the Visual Force page. But as soon as I'm going to click or double click on this, then the internal ID of that input field will go to JavaScript. Then by using document.getElement ID, JavaScript will get the reference of this entire JavaScript will get the reference of this entire field. Okay. See step number one, some ID J D colon one colon one J D, whatever happened. That ID went step number one. Step number two by using document dot get element by ID. Now JavaScript got the complete reference of my field. Then step number three, I'm saying now I have a full reference. I'm saying show me whatever value is present in that field in the JavaScript and it will show me like this. Double click and look at this. It's going to show me shaker. 
So this is the Visual Force page. This is the JavaScript. This way you are transferring data from Visual Force page to JavaScript. This kind of activities are pretty much useful in many cases. Please note, it's only useful when you are using some JavaScript code. Okay. So this is the example to understand how actually we can work on Visual Force page JavaScript pass the data in this direction. Okay. So I hope you got lots of useful information about this, and now you understood that how actually at least at least you can call any function from your Visual Force page on a specific event. Plus, you can pass ID of that entity. Plus, you can receive the ID of that entity. Plus, by using get by using get element dot get element by ID, you can take the entire reference of that input field, and finally, you can even take the ID take the values of that input field by because you have now full reference of that input field in this variable. This much information also you understood properly. You can do many good things in the JavaScript by using Visual Force page combination. Okay, so that's all with this today's uh, additional out of the syllabus topic. Let's meet in the next session to see something more interesting stuffs. Let's meet in the next session.